President Biden summoned leaders from both parties and both sides of Capitol Hill to the White House today, hoping to break a stalemate over immigration and aid to Ukraine. But right now, that looks unlikely, in doubt at best. Both parties say that they agree that something must be done on the border, that Ukraine is in desperate need of critical military assistance, and that Israel needs American help in its war against Hamas. There's a deal potentially in the works to unlock all of that. Senate leadership appears to be on board, but the holdup tonight is in the House, specifically with House Republicans. The new Speaker of the House is facing growing pressure from his conference as a growing number in his party on the right say that his job could be at risk if they don't like the deal that he makes. And joining me now is the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. Speaker Johnson, great to have you on The Source. Thank you for being here. You called this meeting today a productive one. But my question is, where is the common ground between you and the Senate and the White House on immigration? Well, we're about to find out. You know, the Senate has been working on some sort of compromise bill. The House passed our measure, H.R. 2, about eight and a half months ago. Uh, it's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk for a long time. It has key provisions in it that would actually solve the crisis, which is the open border and the humanitarian catastrophe that comes along with that. So we would reinstitute the Remain in Mexico policy. We would end catch and release. We would uh, reform the asylum and broken parole processes and even rebuild parts of the wall. But many of those elements are critical in order to solve the problem. And I, I articulated that to the president again today, as I have been doing since I got the speaker's gavel. But of course, you know, the White House and Senate Democrats say they are not going to pass H.R. 2. So where, where do you agree? Where can there be some movement here? Well, I, I think we had productive discussion today at the White House because I, I told them it doesn't matter to me what you label it. I don't care if you call it H.R. 2, but those elements are really important. And I illustrated to the president and, and to uh, all of our colleagues that are around that table that this is not Republican talking points. We, we went down to the border about three weeks ago. I brought 64 House Republicans down there to see what's happening at Eagle Pass, which is kind of the epicenter right now. And the Border Patrol agents there, the sheriffs on the ground, the people who deal with it every day said that there's simple action that can be taken right now. You don't even need new federal law. You need executive action to stem the flow. And, and the, the deputy chief of the Border Patrol, who's a 33-year veteran of the agency, Caitlin, told us in his own words, he said, I feel like I'm administering an open fire hydrant. I don't need more buckets. I need to reduce the flow. And so we talked about in the White House today how that can be done. And, and the president has a, a very important personal you, executive role to play. You agree that just executive action alone is not what you're looking for here, right? I mean, your job is to, to legislate, to pass legislation. So if that's what you're seeking to do, I don't think the White House call, cares what you call it either. It's, it's what's in H.R. 2 that they don't like. And so I think that's the question. What's, what's the plan here? Because if the Senate's preparing to pass its own version as soon as next week of an immigration bill, are you going to put that on the House floor? Well, look, the devil's in the details. I, I don't yet know what they're going to propose. There's been lots of rumors about it, but I'm, I'm very hopeful that they will give us something meaningful that is very close to what we've sent over from the House. Again, the reason is not for politics. This is beyond Republican versus Democrat. This is about a serious catastrophe that almost nine out of 10 Americans understand is that an emergency level is something that must be addressed. That's what the polling says, because they see what's happening. Caitlin, we had 302,000 people encountered at the border in December alone. We've had over 300 suspects on the terrorist watch list coming to the country. Fentanyl is the leading cause of death for Americans age 18 to 49 right now, coming right over the border. I mean, human trafficking, it goes on and on. People yeah. are coming from 170 countries. We cannot continue what we're doing right now. Uh, and I should note a lot of that comes through legal border crossings. But you said the devil is in the details here, that you want to see what the Senate is offering. But then why did you tell the Republican conference in a call the other day that that bill is dead on arrival in the House? If the bill looks like some of the things that have been rumored, of course it's dead in the House because it wouldn't solve the problem. You can't just do pieces of this and leave, for example, parole untouched, leave the current broken parole process untouched because it's a giant loophole that would allow all these people to continue to come in. I mean, they're, they're settling millions of people throughout the country. They're sending them to every community in America, seemingly. And the American taxpayer is having to fund this. Do you know U.S. taxpayers are spending billions and billions of dollars on the housing and education and the health care and all the benefits that all these illegals are getting when they come into the country? Caitlin, is, this is not a sustainable situation, and everybody knows that. If there's an agreement here that Senate Republicans are behind, people like Senator John Cornyn, someone who, who by no means shares the same views on this as President Biden. If they're in agreement on this, 
Is that going to be something that, that you say no to? Because House Republicans, you know, are the ones you, you all took that trip to the border. You've set it to crisis. I mean, what is the what's the takeaway for the public if you say no to a bipartisan agreement that even Senate Republicans are behind? Caitlin, we, we don't know who's with, uh, uh, in favor of it because it hasn't been, the text hasn't even been filed yet. There's been no vote in the Senate. Well, John Cornyn, you and I were John talking about Thune, they've said that they, that they believe that this is one of the best agreements that, that you'd be able to get. And that they said that what you said to your conference, that maybe with a Republican president, you'd be able to get a better deal. They disagree with that because they say it's not going to get 60 votes in the Senate. If, if the best we can get does not solve the problem and not stem the flow, then it will not be acceptable on the House side. And I have said that very clearly from day one. We have to solve the problem. This is not about getting political points for one side or the other. It's about solving the problem that is now a crisis for every community. Every state is a border state now because people are going all across the country. And by the way, when we were at Eagle Pass, we found out that 60 to 70 percent of the people crossing the border down there are single adult males between the ages of 18 and 40. These are not huddled masses of families seeking asylum. These are individual single males coming into the country for we don't know what. OK, this is serious business. The facts are alarming and the American people are sufficiently, uh, uh, I think, alarmed by this and they want us to make a change. So Republicans and Democrats both should come together and solve it. There's a there's an outcry from Democrat mayors around the country in these so-called sanctuary cities. Speaker, Everybody it, knows we have to fix it. And we've talked to, to mayors where there's no denying this is a crisis. But will you still be able to stand on that and say that the border is a crisis if you reject an agreement from the Senate, a bipartisan agreement that they can get passed that Senator Mitch McConnell's on board with, John Thune, John Cornyn, will you still be able to say that the border is a crisis if you rejected a deal that maybe doesn't do everything that you wanted, but does do some stuff to address the border? Caitlin, you're, you're asking me to address a hypothetical. I have no idea. It doesn't matter to me who votes for what. Because no, it is because we don't know what the text something is. Soon, they said. You know the they general said. outlines of it, though, and you said it's already dead on arrival. So I think there was some skepticism among Senate Republicans about whether or not anything that they put together and passed that, that you'd be willing to put on the House floor. No, I have been very clear from day one, the day I got the gavel, we need certain elements to make sure this is that the border situation is solved. That means to restrict the flow, not based upon talking points or hyperbole or what Republicans say they want. This is coming from the experts on the ground. We went down there to talk to the people in charge of administering this. The Border Patrol agents, the sheriffs in Texas, the people who live with this crisis every single day. And they have asked us to ensure that this happens. By the way, Caitlin, by one way of example, the, they say that if the president himself would sign one executive order and, and reinstate Remain in Mexico, that policy, it could stem the flow by 70 percent. So I asked the president, I asked President Biden just the other day on the phone, I said, why would you not do that, sir? This would solve a big part of the problem. You have it within your ability to do it. But we're and talking about legislation yet. here, and you keep going back to executive orders. But on the actual legislation that you as House Speaker can do, it seems like what you're saying is that your position is what House Republicans want here or nothing, that there's no compromise to be made. Is that right? No, that's not what I'm saying, Caitlin. What I'm saying is we have existing federal law in the books that Secretary Mayorkas has not enforced. We documented 64 examples of the White House, President Biden's executive order, and his um, uh, agencies taking action to cause this catastrophe. I told the president that today in the White House, in the meeting with all my colleagues there. And I said, Mr. President, you have created, you and your policies have created the catastrophe we have right now, and it is incumbent upon you to fix it. We need a combination, okay? But executive action is a huge and important part of this, and the president okay. needs to take that action. I find it notable you keep pointing to executive action, but